Hello, 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 and welcome everybody. Um, <clears throat> first of all, the first thing I want to say, <clears throat> if I can, <clears throat> Paul would be so moved by this. Now, I just spoke, spoke to uh, Barbara on the on the telephone, and she sent this brief little little thing. But first, um, uh, when Paul was sick, and it really wasn't he really wasn't aware of how sick he was, but he was really sick. And I, in the hospital, I said to him, I said. Paul, um, if this goes south, what should we do about Nopala? And so he kind of told me what to do. And then when I came back in the evening, and he was very sick. He was just lying there. And he said, uh, you know what you said this afternoon was very sobering. And so uh, it was really a kind of a enlightenment. He, he wasn't going to die. He was just sick. He was going to get well. So about that, I think it was the very next day, <coughs> I got an email from my daughter Zoe, Zoila. <coughs> she said, she asked me to pass this on to Paul, to read it to him. Mi querido tío Pablo. <clears throat> I'm very worried about you. And I want you to get better as soon as you can. I know you aren't supposed to have favorites. <coughs> especially among uncles <laughs> but you have always been mine <laughs> my earliest memory of you <coughs> and one of my earliest memories altogether <laughs> was eating at the restaurant at your table by the stairs when I tried to hail a waiter you showed me a different way to do it. <laughs> a way that was respectful and the message that went with that about respecting people and their work. No matter what is something that has always stayed with me. Thank you for that and for so many other stories and histories. I have always been proud of my learned and adventurous uncle. I hope you feel better soon and I hope that you know that your niece loves you very much. Soila. Now I read this to Paul and he said, Oh, that's so great. Excuse me for one sec. Little thing. <coughs> Comes from Barbara. Mi querido cuñado, Don Pablo. <clears throat> Paul was my brother-in-law, my beloved friend, and became truly my brother. <clears throat> I miss him terribly, and will continue to miss him. The idea that I cannot go out my back gate and have coffee with Paul still is not quite real to me, nor to my children, Zoila and Bram and Miles, who argued with him, learned from him, laughed with him, and cherished him. I hope he knew how much we loved him. 
Ojalá que supiera lo mucho que le queríamos. Barbara. I'm sure all of you or many of you know this very brief little story, but when we all lived in Palo Alto, we originally came from Oregon, but Paul and Barbara and I all lived in Palo Alto, California together. And Paul would have us over to his house. Uh, uh, he'd have Barbara and I, and then when Miles was just a little baby, Miles would come with us. And he would throw these spreads, these God, we couldn't eat all the food and all this just fabulous <coughs> food, just Mexican cuisine, French cuisine, Italian, everything. And we just, it was just such a joy. You, one felt so important and, and admired by him. And when uh, Paul and I worked together in another venture and when that came to an end uh, and the hotel started, was on the horizon, I <coughs> convinced him to please come down and manage the hotel for all of us because he was such a wonderful host and I finally convinced him because he had uh, other plans too but he came and uh, has been such an important part of the community and has been so influential in so many people's lives. He's uh, had his farm in Nopala and in the earlier days, it was very, it was a very important a part of that community. He in, did some endowments to the the high school, and he sponsored the fiesta for the Nopala one year. And a very, very beloved figure there. Um, I thank all his friends for taking the time to come here, and uh, he would, it would just mean so much to him if he knew. Now I'm uh, I'm going to turn this over to Richard, who has some a little bit to say about Paul. Richard was also a dear friend, as many and many of you were. Okay, I've come to speak to Paul, not about Paul. Once upon a time, when Puerto was just a pup. Mimi and I heard talk of a restaurant opening in Puerto. Cicatello was, was not how it is now. It was hardly a structure. There was a path. There was not a road. The seat of the Hotel Santa Fe was just germinated. We found our way but had to return tomorrow to retrieve the car as a ditch marked the end of the road. <laughs> Puerto Escondido dining at that point was not a consideration. <laughs> Food was dangerous. I can see him now greeting us, his white guayabara shirt. Welcome, said Paul Cruz. Year after year, like so many others, we touched the Santa Fe goalpost to mark arrival in Puerto Escondido. Each time there was Paul. Welcome. He made one believe that he was just there to wait for you. Charisma could be considered as the intangible ability to leave another one with the feeling that meeting you has made their day. Paul made you feel special. One evening, a Mexican trio was playing at the Santa Fe restaurant. Paul stood up with them and sang. He didn't just sing. He like belted out a song. I had never seen a regular person do that before. It was years later that I realized Paul Cleaver was not a regular person. And then I see myself here in this courtyard. Where did it come from? And Paul was guarding his mother. And how a person treats their mother is a great indicator of who they are. Don Pablo was often the appearing teacher to the ready student. His gentle suggesting of a book, presenting it with passive encouragement and an invitation to read it and discuss it. One day the book was Silver Gringo, the biography of William Spratling. Spratling was an expat who established himself in Mexico in the 1930s. He introduced the art of silver crafting to Tasco and drew to him a salon of personalities. He was an accumulator of people and of art. 
In a circle was found drama, creativity, excitement, success, and failure. Spratling was a legend. To be at the table of Paul is to be at the table of Spratling. And we talked about it, about the tradition and the parallels. Paul had Spratling powers. Will there be more Paul Cleavers? I don't know. But he was our Paul. I don't remember when it started, but Mimi and I found ourselves breakfasting regularly at this tabatrine tree. The angel Tusa appeared. The bell rang. The benediction. <laughs> Hi, kids! <laughs> the table swelled. The parade of predictables. Arlene, Sarah Noah, Grant, Barbara, James, Nicole. Lifelong friends were made. Wonderful surprises were not unexpected. The consummate host made, host Paul made introductions. <laughs> Allow me to present Warren Sharp. Warren is editor of Sol de la Costa. Warren, it is my pleasure to introduce Elizabeth. Elizabeth is the Queen of England. <laughs> Everyone was equal. Everyone was made to feel important. And Paul facilitated. And then there were the moments each year when Puerto laid down. And Barbara Cleaver said it best. We have him all <coughs> to ourselves. <laughs> Nothing was off limits. Paul was strong, if not unbending, in his positions. But if you were of the mind that strayed from the charted path, it, in his own way, <coughs> Paul was the most open-minded person I, I have known. With those outside the box, he did not argue. He questioned, he wondered, he found common ground. Paul was gifted with the ability to listen. He was always respectful. He could turn a mundane moment special. He was an eclectic person. Paul could be counted on to know everything in various languages. <laughs> there was news one day. Saddam Hussein had been executed. Paul commented that he had lit a candle for him. I questioned why. He responded, everyone should have a candle lit for that. Perhaps they should. Who will light the outcast candle now? Many of us were in foreign lands when Paul passed. Scattered pockets of grief. James reported daily of Paul's condition and the wonderful care that he was getting from Robin and Marka and Pablo and Felix and the Danias and the Tavachin family and I thank you. Mimi and I tried to explain our friend and our loss to those around us. We couldn't do it. Where do you start? Was Paul a particle or was Paul a wave? It was an unspoken understanding that they would come when someone would enter Paul's intersection. And Barbara wrote us that it was Zoila who did so with love and respect. And Barbara continued, it is the library of a multilingual, highly cultured, and published bibliophile. I guess that's a place to start, explained Paul. And legends are born. And I think the majority of us here today know Paul because we have the Porto Escondido. <coughs> there are a few exceptions, I must admit. One being Carol Ann, Paul's sister, Robin, who's already spoken. And I ha think possibly I may be the next in line for having known Paul the longest. Whenever I was introduced by Paul here in Puerto Escondido, he would say, this is Alan. I carried her out of the hospital <laughs> after she was born. <laughs> now, I have no clue as to the validity of this <laughs> since I was 10 days old and Paul was 8 years old. But I do know that the Cleavers lived in Portland when I was born. I was born in Portland, Oregon, 
My father was not there because it was during the war and he had to go back to Newport to work. And my, our families were very good friends. So it's very likely that Paul did carry me out of the hospital, but I have no clue. <laughs> and there's no one who can, today is alive that can validate it. <laughs> so anyway, Paul was born in Centralia, Washington in 1935. By the time he moved to uh, or started the school, the family had moved to Portland and then on to Albany, Oregon in 1946. My first memory as a child of the Cleaver family home in Albany, Oregon was the front room which housed three large weeding rooms, hand weeding rooms, each with work in progress uh, by one of the four Cleaver children or her or Josephine, their parents. To this day, I still have a couple of ar articles that have the label sewn in them, Cleaver hand woven, which I'm going to pass on because they were woven when I was young. I'm going to pass on to my granddaughters and the story will go on. Um, the other memory I have of my childhood memory is the baby grand piano that sat in the living room of the Cleaver home. And the reason why this made such a big impression to me is my mother had me taking piano lessons and I was learning on a second hand upright. <laughs> <And> so <laughs> a baby grand really was making an impression to me. <laughs> <laughs> Paul, as we all know, had a wonderful voice, which has already been mentioned, an excellent ear and real talent for the piano. I think many of you who have stayed at the Chappachine, particularly in the early years, remember in the evening, sometimes Paul would give a mini concert, at which time he'd be playing the piano or and or singing many of the pieces in his own composition. Uh, after high school, Paul attended several universities, beginning with the University of Oregon, where he was president of his fraternity, then moving on to Deep Springs in Northern California, and then ultimately Cornell University. After graduation, he applied and was offered a job at a private high school in Florida. One of the conditions of the job was that he would be able to teach and speak Spanish. And of course, Paul B. Paul said, of course I can do that, which was quite to the contrary at that point in time. <laughs> so he spent the summer between university and taking his first job teaching in Cuba, where he immersed himself in the Spanish language, the Cuban culture, music, civil theme. Uh, Robin shared with me that Paul had told him the reason why he had such a good command of the Spanish vocabulary was because while in Cuba, he spent a lot of time not only learning Spanish and speaking it, but reading the Spanish newspapers, and that was the key to him having the vocabulary had. We all know what an impression this experience made on Paul, because he loved to talk about Cuba, and in the later years, he talked about moving to Cuba, and developing a mini tapache, which unfortunately um, didn't ever happen due to many circumstances that we're all aware. <laughs> Paul taught at a number of private high schools around the United States, but the two most notable, I believe, were Lakeside in Seattle, Washington, where two of his students were Bill Gates and Paul Allen, and then the other one, being in 
Tucson, Arizona. And this is where Paul had his first introduction to Mexico. He would organize tours for his students to take the train to the Copper Canyon and sometimes on uh, Guadalajara. Then in the 70s, as Robin mentioned, Paul um, moved to Palo Alto and joined him in the Folklorica Yarn Company, where he worked for a few years. And then he started his own business of the same nature, which took him both to British Columbia as well as to Bernal, Mexico, which is a little weaving town today of about 4,000 people um, outside of uh, Carantaro, Carantaro. <laughs> and where he purchased a, spin a spinning yarn mill in both places, which he then brought to Palo Alto uh, and used for his business. Another <coughs> adventure that Paul had during about the same period of time was he would purchase Chevrolet Bel Air four-door sedans. Now, how many of us can remember that car? <laughs> <laughs> I remember being very impressed when boys had that type of car. <laughs> but anyway, he would purchase them in the U.S., drive them to British Honduras, which at that time, this type of car was the taxi cab. Uh, car of Belize, and then on his uh, before he returned to Palo Alto, he would buy Columbia uh, pre-Columbian artifacts and sell them in Palo Alto. Oh dear me, I lose my cheat sheet in my order. <laughs> we all know Paul. He was one of the most creative, gracious, genteel. <coughs> intelligent, welcoming people there ever was. So in 1981 of August, um, when the construction of the Santa Fe Hotel was begun, and then in December 1982, when the Santa Fe was open with 14 rooms and a very small restaurant, it was a natural for Paul to invite and as, I don't mean Paul, <laughs> Robin, to ask Paul to come and run the, uh, oversee the construction and manage the hotel, as he's already articulated. And, but it took a little doing, but <laughs> 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 he, uh, and, the re and as we know, the rest is history. Paul helped create a very, very special ambiance here in this little corner of the world, of which we were all part. <laughs> in his memory, how about if each one of us individually try to continue this ambiance in memory of Paul? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. May I say, Blanca's going to say a few words, but for those of you who don't know Blanca, she is now taking over the running of the Tabachin. I don't know what I would do without her. She's an exceptional person and totally dedicated to making whatever any uh, visits mm -hmm. or, or breakfasts here the most agreeable possible. So we're very fortunate to have her. Very good. no me van a entender, yo no sé eh, inglés, este, pero bienvenidos a Tabachín. Eh, don Pablo para nosotros fue una excelente persona, un gran amigo. Eh, él, sus últimos días, fue muy feliz, él estuvo muy consciente. Él pensó en todos ustedes los últimos ocho días. Él pidió que Tabachín continuara para sus amigos extranjeros, que los amigos que cada año vienen con nosotros, que nosotros estuviéramos aquí, que no nos fuéramos. Afortunadamente, don Robin nos apoyó y seguimos trabajando. Es, ha sido una labor un poquito difícil, pero aquí estamos con la ayuda de, de mis compañeros, que y 
igual están, a, están trabajando mucho y esperamos seguir con Tabachín y con el apoyo de todos ustedes, con el de Don Robin que siempre está al lado de nosotros, continuar con algo que Don Pablo quería mucho, que era su hotel. Nosotros estuvimos, como ustedes saben, mi esposo estuvo 19 años con Don Pablo, era prácticamente su mano derecha, era lo que, todo lo que Don Pablo quería era a través de Pablo. Eh, don, nosotros conocimos a Don Pablo, como ustedes no tienen ni idea, eh, yo sí puedo asegurarles que Don Pablo no sufrió, Don Pablo eh, estuvo todo, todos los ocho días en el hospital, nosotros nos turnamos para cuidarlo en el hospital, Don Robin, el doctor Lepe, Amando, Doña Ceci, nos apoyaron en el hospital, Don Pablo estaba tan contento, yo muchas veces pregunté si él quería salir de ese hospital y ir a otro lugar y él me dijo, no, estoy muy bien cuidado aquí, estoy muy feliz de estar en este lugar, tenía un médico a su lado todo el tiempo, yo estuve con él dos horas antes de que él falleciera, todavía bromeó junto conmigo, él, él terminó su vida hablando, hablando con Pablo porque él estuvo a su lado en el último momento de, de su vida. Para nosotros ha sido muy difícil continuar aquí sin él, pero esperamos seguir haciéndolo con la ayuda de Don Robin. Creo que también con Don Robin él habló y le pidió que, que nos, echa, nos apoyara a nosotros como ustedes pueden ver, sin don Pablo, los trabajadores nos quedábamos sin protección. Porque era lo que es, era para nosotros un protector. No era un jefe, era un amigo. Siempre fue un gran amigo para todos y muchos aquí. No nos dejarán mentir, tenía su carácter muy fuerte pero siempre cuando hacíamos bien el trabajo, él no los reconocía. Ahora nosotros trabajamos cada día y cada día sentimos su presencia y hacemos las cosas como a él le hubiera gustado, siempre. Y muchas gracias por estar aquí en Tabachini. Esperamos que lo que preparamos para ustedes les guste. Gracias. <laughs> but uh, I have to say it's so nice to see all of you here because Paul is smiling behind me. He is smiling. He is liking it. Uh, I just wanted to say that when we came back this year we didn't know what we were going to find. And we found these people that were so good and so nice and taking their responsibility very seriously. And I would like to present Donia Vicky, Blanca, Pablo, the Pequenita, Andreles, Donia Tema, Felix, and Claudia. And Nice gathering, Nicole. Yeah.